Hello and welcome to the Channel 5 News. I am Idona Jean Baptist. Coming up, Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat, Baroness Patricia Scotland, says Hurricane Maria has created an opportunity for Dominica to take a different approach in its rebuilding process. Secretary General Scotland met with Prime Minister Skerritt on Independence Day. She spoke to Channel 5 News in an exclusive interview on Community Day of Service before a tour to observe the impact of the September 18, 2017 disaster on the island. I would love us to recreate Dominica into the ideal green. There's so much that we now know that we didn't know before. We know, in fact, that many of the old ways in which we managed our land, built our buildings, were actually probably more sound. We know that there are new methods that are being developed every day through biomimicry, which is basically mimicking nature. The um, R&D of nature has been there for billions of years. We've only been here for a shorter period. And so man and nature working together has created an opportunity for us to do something more uh, creative and successful if we listen to nature. You know, so many old people in um, Dominica, we've got the largest a number of centenarians per capita almost anywhere. If you speak to these older people, they'll tell you about the ways in which the water went, how they built their houses, why they had the window here so the wind could go through. It's time we listened to some of our older people because we can take their wisdom with our modern creativity and opportunity, meld the two to get something which would be really dynamic that nobody else has. Up next, for the first time since Hurricane Maria, we bring you a local economist's perspective on the destruction. Here's Kenny Williams with that report. It's been over a month now since Hurricane Maria left its stain here in Dominica, and of course the country felt had an economic impact as a result of the hurricane. Joining us today is none other than Mr. McCarthy Marie, an economist here in Dominica. Just give us some feedback as it relates to the economic impact that the hurricane had on the country. Well, obviously the main drivers of the economy were hardly hit, which is the tourism, medical education, and agriculture. For the agriculture, I think that's the one that will bounce back the quickest because we can um, essentially plant crops that grow in three, three months. And, um, and even some of the crops that were in the ground, like, that grew in the ground like dashing, yams, etc., we saw them back on sale in the market relatively quickly. So those crops should be back on stream relatively quick. Tree crops like um, oranges and so on and so far as those got damaged, when you take a little while to get back on. And we had a budding coconut oil business going on, but coconuts, um, you know, tall trees, lots of them got broken. So there's a definite impact on the coconut oil business. And it will take some time before that comes back up because the coconut tree takes, even the dwarf coconut, takes about three, four years before it starts bearing coconuts. So that will be a big impact. Um, bananas, well, right now, at the time the, the storm came, we practically had no bananas. So it's a good opportunity to plant back bananas so that we have bananas for sale. And bananas will be coming in about nine months after they've planted. So we should expect agriculture to bounce back relatively quickly. Tourism is a bit of a different matter. Um, in terms of still over tourists, we understand that quite a few of the establishments suffer damage to some extent, some very extensively, some only minor damage. Those with minor damage, of course, should be back in business, ready to receive guests in a month or two, by, I would say, by January or so. Those that have sustained more damage, would have, which requires rebuilding substantially, I don't see them being back in business before about a year's time. But that's, in, on the one hand, the ability to receive them, but the next question is the demand for tourism in Dominica. Will the tourists still be coming to Dominica given 
the fact that lots of what they come for has been destroyed or compromised. For example, um, the trail to the boiling lake, I assume, is um, you know has been changed somewhat, and it has to be made safe again for people to be able to to go to the boiling lake. That shouldn't take too long if the ministry, if it's prioritized for the forestry department to work on these trails to get them back in action as soon as possible, you know. But the bigger impact is the fact that the tourism accommodation plant will take some time to be repaired and be able to receive guests again. Yeah, so that, that, that's definitely a down. Um, you understand that the Ross Medical School should be starting up again pretty soon, by January at least so that the students will be back here and the activity which they generate in the economy will rebound because lots of their housing is still intact. Um, the school got some damage which can easily be repaired. It's, it's not a, like, a, like a complete wipeout. Yeah. With several economic activities um, affected as a result of the hurricane, in terms of recovery, in your professional opinion, how long do you think um, it would take for Dominica to get back? Probably not where it was, but at least close to that. Ah, I would say actually a year or two, you know, because the medical schools, for example, are one of the main drivers of economic activity in Dominica. And I would expect them to be back in action by January, at least for us. And uh, I don't know what are the plans for the other school, but I would expect them to be ready to receive students again, or the students to come back wherever they went to, by at least by March. So I think that would come back. The tourism business is more iffy, because even with the cruise ship visitors who come to visit sites, if the sites are not um, easily accessible, if the roads are considered dangerous, etc., etc., then the tour um, managers on the ships will be reluctant to let people go out on, on these tours. They might come and stay around roads where it's relatively safe to walk around and buy stuff. Um, but they, there's a, 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 a bigger problem having to do with unemployment. In other words, like all the people who were employed in the tourism business, let's say accommodation business, those properties that have to take a year or more, whatever, to reconstruct, they can't hire people at the same time. Although, of course, because of the nature of the devastation, I would expect there will be a great demand for construction services. You know, so carpenters and people who know the difference between a nail and a hammer should be in great demand as soon as the rebuilding efforts and re-roofing re gets, gets going. Now, Dominica is in recovery mode right now, um, trying to put itself together, so to speak. Uh, give us your feedback on how government, or the powers that be, are, are doing right now in terms of recovery for the country. Well, they're doing relatively well, I would say, because I, I spoke to somebody who was in Totola and came to Dominica and said, oh, but you're doing better than Totola um, in terms of getting things back to normal. But um, we know one of the big failures of the as authorities in general was the lack of security that existed for about a whole week, which allowed lots of the businesses that had not been impacted to, you know, get, really get another storm, so to speak, which creates a situation where all the persons who work in many of these stores have no have no employment and they're not sure if the store owners are going to return and reopen the stores and then re-employ them. So that that's uh, not a, a not so good thing might say that's happened now and the people are you know kind of experiencing that. And we'd expect for example, now that we are getting um, relief supplies, that that will dwindle as, the, as time passes on, and there will be less and less relief supplies, and we'll have to rely on more and more on our own resources to get um, sustenance. The government, of course, I think they've just signed a, a, an agreement. I saw a press release with the World Bank for a hundred million U.S. dollar loan, which will be mainly to reconstruct public infrastructure that was damaged during the hurricane. And I would just like to say um, that the response of the utility services, Dowasco, Domlek, and the telephone companies 
was exemplary in my, in my, in my mind because they got back on air very quickly. And that was McCarthy Marie, an economist right here in Dominica. Of course, he suggests that one to two years is a time frame for recovery for Dominica to bring back some sense of normalcy to the economy. When will it be back to normal? It's anyone's guess. Kenny Williams reporting for Channel 5 News. And now, a call for the authorities to rethink the use of the largest green space in the city. Andrea Louis has that story. Forest officer with responsibility for national parks, Jacqueline Andre, says the authorities will have to rethink the use of the botanic gardens post-Hurricane Maria. Currently, a team from Cuba is on island assisting in the cleanup of the largest green spots in the city of Roseau. Andre pointed out that the use of the botanic gardens has changed over the years and restoring the area must be reflective of its multiple functions. Quite a bit needs to be done, but we also have to rethink exactly what we would like to have the botanic, if it's a real botanic gardens. Because as I said to mention to you, it used to be a botanic gardens, okay. but um, since after David and most recently, a lot of the, the uses has changed. Um, when, when it was the botanic gardens, a, a number of like, for example, like uh, playing football and all these kind of activities and curl in the park and all that, was not uh, was not done during in this area during the sorry this time and so we we probably now it's the opportune time to to look at the botanic gardens and to rethink what is it we really want is do we really want a botanic gardens where we only have trees and where where we have um, pe uh, you know the you know people coming in for that purpose botanists you know re people who just want to come and relax in the botanic gardens as it used to be before. Although we had crickets, you know, it used to be a, a really nice prize ground for cricket. But it, it is a time where we really have to look at it and to see how we can recreate the gardens, maybe as it was, or even better. And um, so it, we will need to look at what sort of species we would like to plant, um, what sort of um, activities we would like to do. So maybe probably um, section in some of the gardens. As I, I said to you, pre-David, um, you had an, uh, an ornamental um, section, you had in the agriculture section, and then you had the other sections within the gardens. So, and, and I think it's the only green space in, in, in uh, you know, large green sp space in Roseau. So we need to take care and to, to rethink and to do it properly. These trees have been there during the time, I don't know, Kew Gardens, as long before Hurricane David. So, so most of the trees were planted during Hurricane David. A few of them were replanted after Hurricane David. And uh, if, if, if you understand, Kew Gardens was, they had a few botanical gardens in the Caribbean and Dominica was one of the, the, the best uh, example of, of, of a botanic gardens in the region. However, Hurricane David ha really did us uh, a blow and so some of the trees came from Asia and Africa and um, some, you know, s s trees around the world. Most people thought it was, we were, we were the trees in the gardens were um, endemic trees and, and stuff. No, they, they came from all over the world. As the country is recovering from Hurricane Maria, I know we are in a cleanup phase. You know, people are setting out their garbage debris from their homes and the streets are being cleaned. What is the cleanup effort like for the botanic gardens? Okay, we've, we've started uh, the cleanup efforts and we've, our, our own team, our botanic garden staff and, and our utilization section of the chainsaw section have been assisting us. We've also had assistance from DART, this is an, a, a Boris group from, from the UK and uh, we go, we're going to have the Cubans on board and we should see a, a, a faster rate of um, cleanup in the gardens uh, during the next few days. Okay. I guess Dominicans are looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, now let's move on to our various eco sites. Eco -sites we yes. know that that is what Dominica is known for an ecotourism destination. What sort of impact has there been to our eco sites from the hurricane? Oh boy, it's 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 been uh, a really bad blow for us. A number of trees have fallen across the, some of our trails, and you know if you go to Trafalgar Falls, the access there is really very difficult. You can get to the falls, but it's going to take you. Uh, a 10 minute walk has taken uh, an hour and a few minutes. Um, Emerald Pool is the same. Um, we've had people going to the, 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 the pool, but 
the 10, 15 minute walk, it's also another hour and a half or more to get there. And that's because of the number of trees, you know, you have, we had a number of large trees um, falling across, crisscrossing the, the trails. And so, you know, it's going to be difficult for us to um, reopen the trails as it was for the, for, especially for the cruise passengers. But what we're hoping to do is to, um, again, the Cubans and some other volunteers are going to help us to, and, and some contractors are going to help us to clear the trails uh, as soon as humanly possible. Okay. You mentioned the trails have been impacted due to falling off trees across them. What about the safety of the site itself? Are people allowed to go there or do you prefer not to? Well, we prefer not to have people in, go into the sites. One of the things that we have is people trying to get there and what they may, may try to do is to create an, another trail. We call that social trails. And it's going to be difficult for us um, because they will probably be impacting on the, on the forest itself. Um, so you, we, we would like to use the existing trail and not to make any other shortcut trails. Once you start doing that, we, it's going to be problems for us. Mm -hmm. And as it stands now, everywhere looks the same. Mm -hmm. um, everything looks like, you know, possibly that's the trail to go there. But we would like to use the same, same route as possible where we have um, issues with um, access and we may have to dive with some of the, some of the trails. I know for sure Boiling Lake may be one of them that we have to do some diversion because um, we, we've had a lot of issues with it even before um, the, hurricane. The, the hurricane and during Erica and other um, small storms. So we, we would like to work on it to ensure that the safety of the general public. So we would like to advise that you know the trails are closed and we, we hope that you can bear with us and we try as much as possible to have the trails open. Is there any message you want to leave with the general public as we end our discussion? We would like the general public to sort of cooperate with us on some of the things that we are doing. Um, if, if we say the trails are closed, if we say that you should not extract any timber from the, from the forest, we would really like you to, to respect that. And the forest fires especially, you, we see a number of people are doing uncontrolled um, um, burning and we, we do have some, some forest fires and people maybe use the opportunity to just go cutting in, in the forest and illegal hunting and all that. We, we would like the animals to, um, to recover and Mr. probably Mr. Jira will probably talk to you more about that, but um, to, to really assist us in, in getting back things together. If you want to volunteer, let us know and um, we will be happy for your help. Great. Yes, Andre, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And we just heard from Forest Officer with responsibility for National Parks, Jacqueline Andre, on the division's efforts to restore Dominica to its former glory as regards the botanic gardens and our various eco sites. This is Andrea Louis reporting for Channel 5 News. In other news, Doasco is hoping to have water restored to most of the island by year end. But, as Julian Morris reports, it won't be easy. When top Doasco officials spoke at the government press briefing on Monday, it was difficult to say when water would be restored to the entire country. We have various communities still without water. I just got to name a few of them. Water Area 30, uh, Pichelen, Grand Bay, Tetemorn. Grand Bay has water, but Pichelen and Tetemorn uh, doesn't have. Water Area 35, Water Wave and Coptol Trafalgar, the lower part of Coptol is already supplied with water. Water Area 4, Colibistri, Morn Ratchet. Water Area 5, Coliho. Water Area 6, Dublin Bioche. Water Area 14, 15, Peibush, Mopak, Tibo, Belmanie, Born, Dodan. Water Area 16, Benz. Water Area 18, 19, WWM. Woodfall Hill, Wesley, Marigot. Water Area 31, Sufre Scott's Head, Water Area 32, Bellevue Chopin, Water Area 33, Girardel, um, Eggleston. Uh, of course, we would like uh, to, to give a date, but at this point, uh, we are keeping, uh, I'm hoping that by the end of December, we are working towards to restore the water supply. In these communities that I called uh, the names, uh, we have works ongoing in uh, most of them. 
in which, as uh, explained before, some we already ordered, uh, ordered it, purchased the pipes and fittings, um, and uh, we have access access road works ongoing, uh, clearing of intakes, uh, and. Uh, and further, uh, in terms of the pump stations as well, um, we are trying to secure uh, generators from the uh, international, with the assistance of uh, our, our partners uh, from the international agencies. Uh, as such, I, I would like to say that we are very committed. We are working with diligence in order to try to meet a time frame in which uh, in, in which uh, we we uh, can uh, um, still have the patience of our customers uh, and uh, hopefully that uh, towards the end of December um, some of these water systems uh, in which I called um, the water will be restored and some even before that over the last couple of weeks we've seen a few more areas receiving water such as St. Joseph, Meru and La um, Layu have received water um, we have restored water in the Lapland community. Um, all of the Kalinago territory is now receiving pipe on water again from the Wasco. So the number of new areas that have been covered over the last couple of weeks, we are at the point now where we are just over 61% in terms of coverage island-wide, which means that about 14,000 of our 23,000 customers are receiving pipe on water from the Wasco. We do operate some 43 water areas and um, just about 50% of those, just under 50% of those have water restored. But in terms of, of the population served, we are serving well over 14,000 of our 23,000 customers. With 93% of its system destroyed by the hurricane, the Wasco is going to have to explore ways of becoming more climate resilient. The idea long term would be to rebuild all our water systems and also to enhance them to be climate resilient. Um, as you know, it seems that for the past few years, almost every two years, we've been dealt a serious blow by some very large um, tropical system. And in years gone by, it didn't seem like those were so common. So clearly with climate change, we expect that those kinds of impacts will become more frequently. And we do not want that every two years we're going to be in the same situation again. So clearly there's a need to rebuild, as they say, to build back better and to add more climate resilience in whatever we do. Water is being trucked to a number of communities such as Giro de Legliston, Monrachet, Kulibistri and Colliho. Water filtration systems are currently operating in Hatton Garden, Wesley, Woodford Hill and Marigot. For Channel 5 News, Julian Morris reporting. This has been the Channel 5 News. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona John Baptist. And to our viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.